Thanks for coming, guys. So uh, this talk is about developing and the use of deep neural network regression in MLib. Um, first, some acknowledgments. This is built on great work done by Alex Alenov, who built on a lot of the architecture, and Michelle Riemann. Um, the algorithm's presentation is going to sort of have a little bit of motivation at the beginning, talking about uh, sort of the problem of regression and what types of algorithm tend to fit models well. Um, so let's look at basically examples of application. Um, recently, there's been a lot of great research on location tracking and images, and so um, convolutional neural networks have made it possible to sort of learn a feature representation in images so that if you're looking at data from cameras, you can sort of locate where people's faces are or find moving objects so a robot can sort of track things over time with these regression networks to sort of continuously valued outputs. Um, as well as sort of predicting the lifetime value of a customer. Um, oftentimes there'll be sort of linear and nonlinear features that do a good job of making that prediction and so there's lots of business value in a number of these stock market exploration, forecasting the demand for a product, pricing optimization, et cetera. And there's a long history of sort of using neural networks in stock price um, prediction so that you can sort of get a hint at which um, sort of stocks are likely to do well or poorly and sort of focus um, your organization on those. Um, so has everyone in the room sort of tried training a linear regression model? Yeah. Okay, so you who have trained this model, um, what are some of the sort of limitations that we have linear relationships. Yeah, okay, great. That's like one of your calls. But, um, you can only find linear relationships. Any other frustrations? Well, I mean, there's an advantage, disadvantage in this sense. It's a very simple and interpretable model. You know, you can say which x1, one unique change in x1, how much it affects y1. Yeah. But of course, like this, the flexibility problem. But exactly. So, um, interpretability is certainly an upside for linear models, so relatively more. Um, but the absence of sort of nonlinear feature finding is a downside. Um, there's one more that I wanted to sort of talk about, which is the process of manual feature engineering, uh, which is an extremely frustrating one for a data scientist. You can imagine sort of looking at an image and trying to manually construct a hierarchy of abstractions, trying to sort of take the pixels and um, manipulate them to be transformed with one another in a way that created a coherent um, representation of the image. And that would be an extremely hard problem for any data scientist. It can be infeasible when you're looking at high dimensional data. Um, you can also, you can't just automatically discover nonlinear structure in your data when you're using linear regression. Um, extreme frustration. So uh, let's also talk about decision trees for regression. There's um, basically this great structure that lets you sort of um, look at the variance in your data. And I guess the decision tree set of models, like random forests, and gradient boosting um, also has this important downside where you can fit training data that has nonlinear structure reasonably well, but it's really difficult once you get outside the range of your training data to predict anything other than what the largest values or smallest values that have been seen in your training data are. And so I'll show a few examples of those in the future. You can, you can also use kernel methods, right? right. For Sorry, thank you. You can use kernel methods if you want non. Yeah, if you want. yeah, so there are other ways to find nonlinear structure. Turn off the an example of this. Um, but for decision trees, you'll find nonlinear structure that doesn't generalize very well. Um, and as far as Spark is concerned, the regression models that are available are linear regression, decision trees, uh, random forest, and random boosters. And so you're sort of out of luck with respect to generalization of kernel methods. Um, so with decision tree models, um, there's this major downside. You're incapable of generalizing outside of internet the data, but thankfully, uh, there's a great algorithmic solution, uh, which is a multi layered perceptron for regression. Basically, a deep neural network that will automatically discover nonlinear structure in your data. Um, and so, this is sort of a new algorithm on Spark MLlib. So, it's scalable, it's going to work cleanly with the rest of the Spark infrastructure with the pipeline API, you know, safe level, et cetera. Um, and we can sort of do a comparison on a generalization task. So, um, this graph is showing is basically a comparison between um, linear regression, the three decision tree models, the so decision trees, random forest, and gradient boosting, um, and a potential new algorithm, multi-layer perceptrons for regression, where you want to learn a very simple relationship. So this graph is basically the true la label for what the output is on the x-axis, and the predicted label by the algorithm on the y-axis. And so ideally, your algorithm would have a perfect relationship between the 
true label and the predicted label. That's that black line. And you can see that um, we've basically given it training data that went up to one point in the range. So um, at about 20,000, you start to see how the algorithms perform outside the range of the training data. And so the performance of these algorithms on this sort of simple toy example is very, very good um, up to the point where they stop getting training data. And at that point, the decision trees are only going to be capable of predicting the value that's at the edge of their range. The linear regression model, with some feature engineering, would be able to try to generalize to the nonlinear structure in the data. Um, but without that feature being manually put in, um, it's not going to be able to generalize cleanly. And so you have to either have a data scientist who's going to go through your data and find these nonlinear features and manually encode them, um, or try to use something like a multivariate perceptron, which is going to do some nonlinear transformations over the data um, and actually be able to map much more cleanly to a relationship that's an interaction between two variables. Um, so the major features of this model are um, the automated feature generation that I've talked about. Um, so if you're using it in combination with convolution for trying to figure out, you know, you have this regression problem continuously wearing this image is, is some like joint or some sort of moving body part. Um, you're going to be able to, with the neural network, create a representation that combines pixels into edges, combines edges into shapes, shapes into parts, parts into objects, and do the regression on a much higher level representation of the data than exists. Um, so this automated feature generation is almost impossible for a data scientist to do manually, and so you need to automatically learn that structure. Um, you're also capable of learning nonlinear structure automatically and generalizing outside the input data range, both of which you sort of saw in the previous visualization. So uh, a few other features of this algorithm include like full pipeline API integration. Um, so if you are trying to basically have a set of operations that you run um, on your sort of Spark algorithm, it's really easy to fit it into a pipeline. You can save and load these models automatically, and a lot of the time these deep networks can have you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of parameters. Um, and so the automatic save load in Spark is a sort of great tool for um, trying to serve your models or trying to give your model to somebody else to try out. Um, and in a lot of this sort of deep learning ecosystems on CAFE and TensorFlow, people will build models and share them with one another. Um, and this gives you sort of a nice infrastructure to do that. Um, you can train it with both gradient descent and LBFTS, and it has sort of tangent rate activations. Um, so the original implementation um, from Munov only had sigmoid activations. And the problem with a sigmoid activation is your gradients uh, will sometimes get lost. So if they're extremely large or extremely small, um, it will lose the activation. So what the tangent does is it sort of zero centers everything. Um, the ReLU does a really nice job of not saturating those gradients, and so you get better performance with these activation functions. Um, and so there's some future work that's being considered. Um, adding more modern activations, so I've added tangent ReLU to MLLib. Um, we're also likely to add something like Wiki, ReLU, or MaxApp to maximize the performance of these models. Um, convolutional neural networks, which are basically sort of two more layer types, a convolutional layer type and the max pooling layer type, which make sort of state-of-the-art image processing possible. Um, and then basically drop out or level to regularization to improve the generalization ability of these algorithms, uh, creating a flexible deep learning API, uh, tensor support, and ideally recurrent neural networks so that the state-of-the-art natural language processing models that are currently being researched are sort of at the fingertips of Spark users in that outlet. Um, so these are a few sort of options for the future of Spark that are being debated that would ideally sort of create an awesome environment for users, um, especially users who don't have deep learning APIs that are sort of very common. So if you're an R user, you're using Spark R, you'd have access to convolutional neural networks on a cluster and be able to do um, sort of learning of the big data with these deep learning techniques. Um, and so uh, thank you. Uh, so a few acknowledgments and are there any questions? That's good. Good, good presentation. They ask a question before, so I can look at some. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Oh, thank sure. you.